Pools and waves, pools and eddies, trout are rising for the naked eye. And the sun is shining down on the belly, hope to be for life until the day that I die. Some folks like horses, cats or dogs. Me, I like fishing with a rod and a fly. Yes, fishing is a favorite pastime of mine. If I couldn't do it, I think I would cry. Well, life is good when I'm wading the river. It gets even better when I test a fly. If I get a trout, it don't really matter. It's fun just to be here and give it a try. Thought out the long bitter winter, the water is clear and the skies are blue. I'm standing in the middle of the Delaware River, might even catch and release one or two. Stone flies and pettis in the riffles are plenty, mayflies courting on fragrant breeze. The wax wings come down from the heavens. For their dinner up in the pine trees. A trout is rising in the far eddy. I make a false cast, then take my aim. If he takes the fly, I feel so much better. And if he doesn't, I'll feel no shame. It's raining now on my favorite stream. I'll bear it all just fish with a feather. So when I sleep, I will have a sweet dream. And life is good when I'm wading the river. It gets even better when I cast a fly. If I get a trout, I don't really matter. It's fun just to be here in Try. Ripples and waves, pools and nettys, trout are rising for the mayfly. And the sun is shining down on the valley. Hope to be fly fish to the day that I die. Welcome to my show today. Hey, folks. What we're going to do today is we're going to tie a fly. We're going to tie our first fly. Last week, uh, two weeks ago, I talked about some of the tools that you use in fly tying. And then last week, I talked about some of the materials we use when we tie flies. And this week, we're going to actually tie a fly. Okay? So, quickly, I'll go over the fly we're going to tie. What we're going to tie here is called... The, a, a hare's ear nymph. And what this refers to is the nymphal stage of a mayfly. Okay? This is the stage where they're crawling around on the rocks and they're, they're uh, down there on the bottom uh, scooting along rocks. They're, they get loosened by the current and then they float downstream where trout readily pick them off. What, what it is is the hare's ear nymph is probably one of the best all-around nymphs you could have. Uh, for trout fishing. It's a good early season uh, fly and the thing I like about it best is it's, it, it, it's very easily tied. And what it is is uh, we're going to use some hare's ear dubbing and that's for the body. We're going to use a little gold tinsel for a rib on the body. We're going to use a little bit of our uh, pheasant tail as some tailing material on the, on the very tail of the hook. We're going to use some of our our uh, turkey quill that's been lacquered as as like a wing case over the the shoulders of the, the uh, fly. And we might even put in a, a little beard of of this material here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to 
go right to uh, a close-up so we can tie that fly. The recipe for the Hare's Air Nymph is fairly simple. We're going to use a hook of heavy wire with a turned down eye. The tail is fibers from a pheasant tail. The body is Hare's Air fur with the guard hairs. The rib is gold tinsel. The wing case is a turkey quill that's been lacquered. The beard is again pheasant tail. So we have our thread right here. I'm going to wrap over it. <coughs> and we'll wrap all the way back to the bend of the hook. I'm going to take a little clipping of pheasant tail material, pull that right off, and then we're going to measure that, and it should be about a, a very short tail, so it should be about no more than half the length of the, the hook. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure that, half the hook, I'm going to pinch it with this hand, and I'm going to cut this off here. Okay, then I'm going to pinch it to the hook. This is called the pinch method. What I'm doing is pinching it and I'm bringing the line up through between my fingers and then back down loosely. And I'll do this a couple of times, kind of loose. And when you're tightening, always pull up and then and place several wraps over that. Work your way back to the bend. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to put a short piece of tinsel in. And I prefer to have gold showing. This is double sided tinsel. It's gold on one side, silver on the other. And what I'm going to do is tie it in with the pinch method again and try to get it so that the gold will be facing out. Okay, take some doing. Okay, then we're going to take a little bit of our dubbing wax here. I'm going to place some of that and I just run the line through it. Okay, so you see there's wax on there. Doesn't take a lot of wax, just a little bit is all you need, just enough to make it sticky. Now I'm going to take the hair's ear mask and I'm going to get some nice, nice fuzzy fur with some longer hackle on it. So with these nice colors, this is what you want. You want stuff like this with some of the guard hairs in it. So what we're going to do is we're going to trim some of that off. Try to get a nice, nice clump of that and then mix it together. So we mix that fur together and you can do this in an old coffee blender if your mom has one around just don't tell her you used it to grind fur up. Uh, their coffee won't be the same after that. And then you basically spin it onto the line. You just kind of use that wax to stick it and then just spin it a little bit. And again this is a pretty good size hook that I'm using. So I'm using quite a bit here. Okay. So that's called dubbing and that's using the wax method. And what I'm going to do is wrap this now around the fly. Okay. And gradually build up towards the front. I'm going to stop about two-thirds up on this fly and then wrap my gold tinsel. Try to get the gold to show. If you can. and then tie that off. You just do a couple of wraps around it to tie the tinsel down. There we go. 
we'll clip that off. Take a little piece of turkey now. And uh, you don't need a lot, you just need a little piece. A little piece like so. Because this is going to represent the wing case of, of the net. We're going to pinch that on there like so. This is lacquered turkey quill. I'm going to wrap back. Okay, and we're eventually going to fold that over forward. But for right now, we're going to leave it right there. We're going to take some more of our beaver fur. Okay, now the fun part starts because we want a nice, nice big bulky. Get some of the wax out of there. I like to put a, more than I need on there and then wipe it off on my with my finger, and that way I know it's really saturated into that thread. Wax is so cheap, I don't really worry about wasting it. If I use too much, I use too much. So we're going to make that nice and bulky. Okay, there we go. And we're going to pull this wing case forward. Okay, and squeeze it, and then tie around it several good times. Pull that up a little bit. Trim this X off turkey quill off. And basically you have a done fly. Okay? But I like to put a little what's called a beard on these. And what that is is a little more of this pheasant tail clipped off. We're going to tie it on the bottom to form like a little beard. Okay, so again, you measure it, pinch it, clip it, and then what I do is I pinch it and hold it underneath and then gently wrap and keep wrapping and hold it in place and hopefully it stays right there. And I will show you the whip finish knot later when I have when I uh, when I have more time tonight I just want to get you so you can tie a fly and we're gonna do a bunch of half hitches and just secure that and we're gonna do several whip finish knots we're gonna clip that off we're going to put a little drop of fly tying head cement on there. Again, you just use your little needle, a little drop right on there. Let it soak into that thread. Let that dry, and you're done. There's your Here's Hair's Air nip. You can clean this uh, eye out with the needle. There we go. You got a nice little hair's ear nip with a beard. Eye. Some hooks have turned up eyes and some are straight eyes. This is the top portion from where the eye ends and it starts to bend is called the shank. The bend is from this point here to the other side where it's actually bending. The barb is down here. For dry flies I usually use barbless hooks and then you have the point. The gap is the distance between the point and the shank. The point and the shank. So let's tie another one very quickly. We're going to put our thread on top, wrap over it, and a another trick I learned is to hold 
this thread at like a 45 degree angle and then as you consecutively make turns it pulls the string right down into a nice neat uh, coil against each other so you get a nice tight weave on the shank of the hook so we're going to tie all the way back to the bend I'm using olive thread so I'm going to go all the way back to the bend trim this off I'm going to tie in a tail tie in a tail and for this it should be about half the shank so we're going to measure it and pinch it trim it and pinch it on there pinch method up through the fingers some folks will put their weight on now if they're going to tie a weighted bead head. So you got a tail on there. It's kind of a short tail, but it'll still work. We're going to take some more fur out of the hair's ear mask and we're going to mix that. I might get some darker hair this time. There we go, got some darker hairs mixed in there. I'll darken it up. The nice thing about this fly is you can make it as dark or as light as you want and a lot of guys uh, will actually tie them uh, in a very in uh, many different colors you know and you have all these different colors on the hairs ear mask so it's if, if you buy one mask for like three dollars and fifty cents it, you really can get a lot of flies out of it and again the hairs ear nymph is one of the best flies you can use so it would behoove you to tie a bunch of these hairs ear flies up. We're just going to wrap around there and maybe a little more, maybe a little more. Make it a happy little bug. There we go. Happy little fat bug that's been eaten. Eaten well. Okay. Now we're going to take the tinsel and try to get the gold out. We're gonna, and this is called palmering. Palmering is where you wrap a material leaving a space. Okay? So some of the, the material below it shows through. And this is kind of thick tinsel. I, I, I technically would use probably a thinner tinsel on, on my flies if, if it doesn't I'm doing this as a demonstration so I want you to see the tinsel if I use a smaller tinsel you may not be able to see it as well so keep that in mind that there are no rules okay you're tying your flies and um, and they will work they will catch trout I guarantee it if you tie a fly I don't care how bad it looks to your eye, it's going to catch a fish. Because you've got the time into it. When you sit down and tie flies rather than buy them, you're automatically putting, putting some good karma into your flies. So you're looking at, uh, at a fly that has love in it 
fishing, love of fishing and love of the outdoors and love of trout already into the fly. So you know what, when you, when you have positive good thoughts about something you're doing, good things will come out of it. So I like to tie each fly and imagine the trout it will catch. And there we go. There's our wing case. We'll clip that off. And we'll tie a little beard in. Okay. Just a little beard. And we'll bring it underneath and pinch it and hold it. And then I will wrap around, tie it off. We got a nice, another nice little hairs here. Trim some of the stark stuff out of here. And again, uh, when you're tying flies, you're going to learn a lot of little tricks. Like one is to put your finger underneath to put push the line away from your scissors. When you start tying flies, you're going to learn a lot of little tricks that will. Uh, that most beginners end up doing at least once. One of those is cutting their own thread and the fly usually comes undone especially if you're tying hackle on there or wings or something a little more complicated than a hare's ear nymph. But there you go. You got a nice little hare's ear nymph. I'm going to put some uh, glue on there. A little drop of head cement to finish it off. Some of your sister's nail polish will work here. If you don't have a sister, uh, ask your mom. Uh, I hope you enjoyed tying the hare's ear nymph as much as I enjoyed teaching you how to tie it. It's a very good fly. It'll work all times of the year, early morning, late at night, any time that they're not, the trout aren't hitting the surface or the bass aren't hitting the surface, try the good old hare's ear nymph. It's a great fly to have in your fly box and I suggest tying up as many as you can stand in different sizes, size 10, uh, 12, 14 and maybe a few 16s. You can tie smaller than that, but uh, I, I usually don't tie my nymphs any smaller than a 16. But you certainly can. You can do anything you want to. Anyway, I, uh, I'd like to mention a, a couple of things about fishing. For one, when you're out there uh, uh, enjoying the outdoors, always try to keep it clean. Pick up trash wherever you go. When I go fly fishing, I always take a garbage bag with me and I pick up trash along the way in, in the parking area or along the roadside. Uh, what this does is it makes it nicer for the next person when they come to visit the outdoors. It's, and remember, the forest isn't, isn't our home. It's, we're just visitors in somebody else's living room. So keep that in mind. And, uh, and, and I wrote another song just the other day. Uh, and it, and uh, so I guess I'll uh, I'll say good night and uh, I'll sing sing my little little song here. 
Oh, by the way, last week I said I said I was going to sing one of my songs. Uh, it was actually uh, I am an animal is is a friend of mine's song, but it's one of the songs that I sing, so I kind of call it my song whenever I play it. But I, I should uh, tell you that it's a friend of mine, Dana Lyons, who travels all around the country singing environmental type songs like I am an animal. But here it is. It's called uh, I Like to Go Fishing. See you next week.